Ayan, good afternoon or shall I say good evening mga katropang <laughs> PSTD at mga katropang uh, trainers. All right, so isa na namang uh, kapaki-pakinabang, uh, worthwhile and very productive session that we promise to have with you. So ako po si June Roy and I'll be your host and facil uh, oh, facilitator to learn. I'll be your host uh, today and along with me uh, okay, so if you can introduce yourself, uh, AM and Pearl. Hello, magandang gabi mga katropa. Welcome to episode 16 na ba to? Pang ilan na 16. ba to? 16 yeah. of Usapang Training at Iba Pa. Ayan. Ako po si AM, uh, Vista Print Manila Learning Manager and also yeah. serving as PSDD BOT Secretary. Hello! Isa na namang magandang gabi <laughs> sa lahat ng ating mga kasama dito sa train, usapang training at iba pa. Ako po si Pearl Martinez. I am the Global Learning and Development Manager for SGS and Co. and also uh, Chair of the Membership Committee. So welcome to another exciting episode ng usapang training at iba pa. All right, we have a very exciting topic for today. But before we go deep into that, why don't we have our Balitang PSTD? Ano bang mga ganap, AM? Ayan, as usual, marami pong ganap ngayong June. You've seen some of them in the preliminary video. But some of the programs uh, coming up this June, Managing Learning and Development Function by mm -hmm. the amazing Miss Vivian. Also, in June 21, guys, pambihirang wow. pangyayari, talagang Miss Evie and Mentor M together uh, in the program, the People Leaders as Mentors. So I'm really encouraging our people leaders out there, not just learning managers, to sign up for this uh, program. And we also have a uh, designing hybrid learning course in June, this is 26 and 27. Ayan. Register at pstt.org. Another exciting event. Finally, we are launching this year our first event under the JPSTD banner or Junior PSTD banner, Bridging the Industry Academe Gap. Maganda rin pong discussion to. We are having, again, a learning conversation. And our target participants are head of academic units, uh, HR and OD practitioners, but you, everyone is welcome to actually join. This is live via Zoom and registration is for free. June 27, po. Yeah, 2 to 4. And of course, something we're really excited about, the first ever Talent Development Research Conference under oh, the yes. PSCD banner. Nung TD Summit po last week, Nag, nagpasilip na ng results ng some of the findings in the research. So talagang... Um, Mas nakaka-excite kasi para nakatikim kang onte You want to find out more. So I encourage everyone also to uh, join us in this conference. And if you are thinking about joining the Gawad Maestro or maybe you've nominated someone or started to apply pero hindi ka patapos, we've extended the applications and submission of requirements for specific categories. Ayan, the six Gawad Maestro Awards will also be held uh, during the National Convention in September. Speaking of, of course, see you in September. We are still offering early bird rates and other discounts if you register now for Breakthrough, our 48th National Convention. We hope to see you there. Now na. Now na. Now punta na. Also, guys, Ewan ko if meron pang hindi member dito. <laughs> Kanina pa kami nag-reflex ng mag ni Sir Jim. <laughs> Pero hindi lang mag, may notebook, pen, stickers, all of that. Your membership ID also comes with benefits. So if you're not a member yet, please inquire via PSTD member now. Thank now na rin. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, AM. Alright. Shout out muna sa mga suki. At mga nanditong mga participants natin ngayon. No? I can see some past presidents, si Jerry, our current president, si Press Irene, uh, myself, no? 2021, sa so tatlong president, some officers, at may mga suki dito. May mga Toastmasters din, no? may nag-hilo sa akin. Uh, nakita lang kami kanina, no, na kanina, Friday, no? 
Raju is also here and so many more. All right. So uh, our topic for today is about something that we consider so important. And so that's why we invited uh, someone who is really an expert on this. I work with her. I've seen how she did it. And during my time in 2021, we also launched a program called Program Branding or Branding Your Training Program. And she was one of the speakers there. So without much further ado, uh, it's my honor to introduce to you our uh, facilitator or guest speaker for today. <laughs> so let me just, uh, you can see naman, no? uh, currently she is the global, oh, hindi lang local, ah, global vice president for HR, uh, specializing on OD and culture at AGNP. Uh, when she was with Deloitte, she was the head of organization transformation lead at SM, uh, assistant vice president for L&D talent management and engagement. And when she was with the Boitis, I look up to her in terms of what we what we will talk about today. No, so pag may launch kaming program noon, uh, she yung go to namin, uh, ini invite namin siya because we are from the subsidiary. So she is the one who is guiding the different subsidiaries on how to really brand and how to promote and sell the programs uh, internally. So you can say she is an authority. Uh, on this topic as I've seen her and known her. So she was our learning and development group manager and also the head of culture and engagement. And when I was the president, uh, she was the 2021 chair of Talent Development Framework Committee and 2018 Gawad Maestro Awardee as an outstanding l and professional. So guys, friends, ladies and gentlemen, palakpakan naman natin. Let's give a Party. Virtual applause Hello. to our speaker for today, Zandra Galang. Hi. Hi, thank you. Napakaganda naman talaga always ng introduction ni Sir June. No? Salamat. Sir talaga, no? Sir. Yeah. <laughs> ano tayo? Humble tayo. <laughs> Alright. Sige. Good so, evening. Good evening. Sana yeah. gising pa kayong lahat. Happy Sunday. Uh -uh. I'm sure with your... Uh, Insights and with your personality here, walang mga antukin dyan, no? So, all right. The format, as uh, you've known, uh, this is like a chat, usapan, no? It's not really a, a yes. webinar, right? So we will be asking series of important questions. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, is in store for us is really understanding the what mm -hmm. and the why first, no? And then later on, the how, no? So when we say selling our learning programs internally, mm -hmm. Externally, it's easy because uh, I'm from uh, a consulting uh, company. Uh, Sandra, mm -hmm. before yeah. you were also in consulting. Yeah. Yung mga namimiss naming mga boys, no? <laughs> si Ed at saka si Louie, they are also mm -hmm. selling their learning programs externally. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's easy. If you, it's, pero yeah. pag internal, mm -hmm. selling it, what do we mean by that? No? So <laughs> maybe we can start with that, Sandra. Okay. So thank you again for having me. No? Tsaka salamat at until now, you still remember the stickiness of how, you know, I was doing or I was selling the program. Um, siguro when, way back 2015, when we started to work together, first seen ate, as l &D practitioner kasi, nakikita namin yung mga emerging, ano talaga, competencies. And it's not just about instructional design. It's not about facility. So, that in the future, we have, be what? Aside from being a business partner, right? We have to be the sought-after partner of the functional leaders. We also have the need for us to be good at curating. Mm -hmm. Maging curator na rin tayo. Why? Because it's really impossible for you to know a lot of diverse topics and be an expert. Sabi nga, di ba? Right. Sa, is that it takes about 10,000 hours for you to be an expert and then you will create the, the learning program, di ba? But aside from that, what is the most important um, emerging, you know, um, competence for or talent for? It's really sales and marketing or being a good communicator. So when we talk about selling the learning programs, it really means effectively promoting and convincing the key stakeholders of your organization. Because yeah. you've made your your 
technical ka, magaling ka, na perfect mo yung paggawa ng objectives, you know. Right, right. You have very engaging content, uh-huh. but or at least before I remember there's a cut off right para hindi masayang yung effort about 15 or 10 kapag it goes below cancel so ang dami na sa sayang right so when you, when you say selling it's really about how do you communicate and sell right you're the the value of your learning program and Ayun. yeah Oh, parang pag right. universe kasi yung tanong mo. Oh. <laughs> Umpisa pa lang yan. Ah. Yeah. Siyempre pang Miss Universe din ang ating guest. Eh. Oh, di ba? <laughs> so what I got there is that uh, you treat the training or the learning program just like a solution or product. And yes. when we say selling, hmm. it's really about influencing the stakeholders. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, not only the participants, but also mm-hmm. the top management and all mm-hmm. the key influence uh, decision makers there uh, to really mm-hmm. invest in the program financially, yes. emotionally, and others. Tama ba, Sandra? Yes, because right you gain also support, right? right? But first, you need to generate the interest. And and ultimately, the result that you want is really to drive participation. So, naalala ko before, I have a strategy pa na... Um, Captivate, collaborate, mm-hmm. and champion in the in my learning council before because the first step is usually the hardest. How do you captivate? True. Right? You know, I was really listening to the past um, you know, usapang training. You talked about certification. It, it's really a combination of a lot of things, right? The credibility of your ideas, credibility of the facilitator, credibility of the content that you have, how engaging. It's the landscape of learning and development is really changing. I've been here in, in this landscape for 20 years that I've seen the shift, you know, from training. And I think one of I have and of course, I believe, you know, I know how to do proper advertising, sales, and marketing. So for me, it's really how to use the concept of sales and marketing to affect you also sell your learning programs within the organization. So let's not talk about muna yung content, right? And right, right, yes. Only, let this just be, let's say, you've done the work, but now you need to sell it, right? Right. And I just want to quickly share lang the similarities. Why it's all about sales and marketing, right? Kasi pag sinabi mong sales and marketing, it really involves a lot of disciplines, eh. Mm-hmm, Kasama mm-hmm. dyan, di ba, sa sales, you have research. You Correct. also have branding. But you have the proper communication, right? And and um, strategic planning is also, you know, part of this. Mm-hmm. So I'll give an example. In L&D, you communicate the value proposition of your L&D program. Meaning, why is this important? How is the life of the person going to change? How is this going to really increase the productivity of the organization and contribute, you know, to, to the success of the company? Similar to sales, you also have that, the value proposition. Mm. And then um, when you say in sales, you have a target audience segmentation. You're not going to sell an umbrella to someone who probably doesn't walk outside during the rain. Diba? May kote. True. So in L&D, we target audience. In sales, you address the pain points and the need or in our turn the skill gap a particular skill gap what is your training addressing so Miller Kadina you also talked about the topic sensitive in sales you call it probably overcoming objections right how do you anticipate yung mga resistance ng employee or even mm-hmm. the top mm-hmm. management, right? Right, right. And then um, in sales, it's also very data-driven. It's either sales go up, sales mm-hmm. go up. In, in training or in, in learning and development or in talent management, it's also about data-driven decision-making. Merong demonstration of your ROI impact. Right, right. It just it should be, you know, increased Ito mga level 4, di ba? Level 4, level mm-hmm, 3 mm-hmm. natin in training. Although, similar, you also teach the executive to not be in skills, relationship building. Alright. Pag-benta ka, 
ng payong, eh, tapos na yun. Dapat zero kang continue relationship. And of course, to mention, customize the message also similar to the marketing. The same way that how do you also target your MND message to the message. Okay. All right. So let me ask Pearl, what mm. did you get from that insights coming from Sandra? Definition pa lang, no? What we mean by selling L&D or your learning programs internally. And it's full packed with so much insight. So I just want to check, uh, what did you get out from there? Hi, well, Pearl. Yeah, hi. Well, interesting actually yung, yung sinasabi ni Sandra because, well, our company is really a branding company. That's the core of our business. And we, we actually do everything end-to-end -end for for corporate brands. So from visioning, dun sa branding mo. And I think that is actually what, what Sandra was, was talking about. And that's something that we do for products. And I think yun yung, it's how to look at your training as a product and something that you also sell. So whatever process, siguro, um, and that's also one thing that we do. Because meron kami isang, group na design company na uh, design aspects so mga designers to. So every time we have a training program, minsan pinapasa namin sa design. Pwede bang gawan mo kami ng complete marketing nitong program na to? And uh, from end to end, di ba? I see. And I think that's uh, what Zandro was, was talking about is basically branding from end to end until you come out with a product. Right. right. So in short, if I got it right from both of you, kapag trainer ka or nasa training ka, hindi ka lang trainer. You are also a salesperson and a marketing person at the same time. Such that even yung unique value proposition, which commonly is associated with selling or business development, dapat pala yung mga learning programs natin, pinag-uusapan din natin, ano yung unique value proposition? Guys, uh, guest, uh, fellow, or mga katrupang trainers, thumbs up nga uh, kung sino sa inyo ang nakaga, uh, gumagawa na noon. If you're already discussing uh, unique value proposition, which is a discipline in marketing and selling, uh, when you are learning to, or when you are marketing or selling your learning programs. No? So ako aminin ko in the past, uh, hindi ko ginagawa yun, no It's only when I got uh, when I got employed at Pro Life UK, that's where I learned na dapat pala ang training binabranden, no? Uh, parang produkto na ibinebenta. Sige nga, kung may mga magta-thumbs up, no? tignan natin. No? And that leads us to the next important question. No? So if that is what it means by selling our learning programs internally, bakit natin kailangan gawin to? What is the big why? of selling our learning programs internally. Again, to Sandra, uh, based on your experience. Why is it important? No? Why is it um, important? Again, kasi in my, when, when I started L&D, and I need to really sell and market, I cannot be piecemeal in my approach. Which means that, in piecemeal yung pa isa isang training no matter how creative ka kasi lagi kahabulin lagi kang mag-iisip ng pang level up level up so for me bakit kailangan it's really to build the culture of learning lagi kasi ako parang I want to uh, I'm so sorry to, to say kasi I'm just explain um, yung experience ko no? strategic ka hindi ka yung pa isa isa okay this is about time management Ano ba yung mga ma, no, diba? masayang pahulo for time yes, management yes. training? Hindi eh. Kasi pag tinitignan mo siya, dapat may strategy ka. And it's really to build the culture of learning for your organization. Um, I, I think that's the re reason why you need to spend time in selling your program. Because ultimately, what you want is to create what we call groundswell. Diba? While you have your top-down approach, now, you're con always convincing the top because they inspire people, follow them. Pagkakas silang mga influencers mo, di ba? At the same time, sagi yung mga tao eh, the, the general workforce, if you do that. But what you do is to change their mindsets. Maybe 
need ka. So, yes. it's so in a sense na from top to bottom, but at the same time, what you're preparing is the foundation from the ground that you really need to start learning fast. Because the landscape, you know, the, the industries mm-hmm. that we're working with, they're really constantly changing fast. So, you need to help them. Because sometimes it's just lack of awareness. They don't know how dangerous it is not to actually have that always learning mindset. Right. So you will be the eye opener. You the salesperson, you know, sales. Right. You will be the eye opener, like the catalyst for the learning culture that you want for your organization. You would. Uh, in addition, may bandin sinabi si Erica dito. It's also to highlight the benefits of learning programs to drive the participation. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. Number one. You, yeah, no. yeah. And then Sans, I I noticed you mentioned about uh, culture. So it means uh, what you said is that it's not only to get approval or uh, to drive the participation. Uh, that's the immediate objective of selling the programs internally. But what you mentioned is that the long term, it's really to build a culture of learning. As you mentioned, uh, kilala ko si Al. <laughs> Always learning. Diba? <laughs> Tama ba? Yes, yes, yes. Oo. So parang you position your learning program, it's like an opportunity for them. Personal or professional for their own growth. Diba? I parang again, I, I'd like to really emphasize on there's a danger if you don't cultivate that mindset. Eh. Kasi sabi right. nga nila, sa so sobrang short term na lang lahat ng skills natin eh. You use it only mm-hmm. for two to three years. After right. that, iba na naman. Diba? True. So, so building a culture of learning means you helping them create that awareness that the the job security that they have right now is how quickly they can really master a particular skill or you know learn something new and really adapt to whatever the situation brings us right or gives us. Great. Oh, oh, I saw Jerry here. Although wala pa siyang comment, but I had a conversation with. Him and it's actually his insights during the talent development uh, summit last last week, no AM. Yeah, and he also talks about uh, learning culture or culture of learning. Mm-hmm. So, uh, hindi na nag-iisa si Jerry when he talks about that, no. Sander is also articulating it here. AM, what are your thoughts and reactions or insights based yes. on what Sandra mentioned? Miss Sandra had me from the first line. Captivate, yeah. collaborate, and champion. And it's really in in my mind, you know, the captivating. It's the storytelling has to be spot on, talaga. Um, when when you're communicating uh, at the executive level, and then the collaboration, I can see nga eh, how how the word was spread, how the, those concepts will really spread because the collaborating is when you're working with uh, the different groups and functions, and of course the championing, uh, and that's where. You know that, that's why in some companies they also do the the testimonials. No, they have people kind of share what they gained from the program. Ayan. So um, it's I I love how we're putting names to the things that we're doing and making it much easier for our audience to pick it up and uh, mm-hmm. implement also. Um, we have questions, pero parang nasa how na na part na siya eh. si uh-huh. si Kevin may question yeah, sige so, mamaya i quote natin later oo oh, oh, iparada natin yan no but despite the efforts of many in terms of promoting their learning programs still there are people who don't uh, necessarily buy in no mm-hmm. uh, sometimes they attend but the buy in is not really there so what causes people not to buy into these learning programs based on your uh, experience, even if uh, there is already the uh, the 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 selling attempt, no, is it because uh, it's the wrong selling strategy, lack of selling, or what are the other possible causes, Kaya Sandra? I think there are a lot of combination that you have to really diagnose, right? Number one, of course, the lack of relevance. Hindi perket uso siya it's bagay to your organization or, you know, it's, it's really pinpointing a particular need or addressing a particular gaps, right? So the lack of le- relevance is for me the number one. I mean, why would I attend, you know, cloud computing, for instance, ha? 
And, you know, with the very, with the time constraint that people have now, pahirap ng pahirap ang work, napaka-complex ngayon, diba? Do I have like four hours of my time to spend on something that I will not use right away or I don't feel is going to be useful for me either personally or professionally? So the lack of relevance is, is still the number one um, probably probable reason. I'm not saying the only thing, right? Or kasama na din dun yung value, right? Uh, I mentioned about time constraint, okay? Just very recently, um, naglabas kami ng calendar and then we had very low turnout. And then, nag-diagnose kami, we found out, four hours ngayon, hindi na pwede. Before, we used to have our training like two days, three days, and then naging one day, and then naging half day. But unfortunately now, with, you know, the industries being disrupted, paiksi ng paiksi yung time na we can really afford to focus on the learning and development. So time constraints can also be a reason. So ang ginawa namin, chinop-chop namin siya for mm-hmm. one hour. And then, okay, so naging better, no? Uh, dumami na. Chunking. Yes. And of course, yung manager support pa rin is important. Or it, pwede na rin yung top executive. Kaya, di ba? Kasi, if yung manager mo hindi rin naman supportive sa learning and development, mahihiya ka rin naman eh kahit gusto mo sana kung attend. I see. Yes, Normally, yes. yes. O kaya hindi na ako nag-attend kasi di ba, my manager wants me to do this. Parang they can't take me out from operations and and attend that. I mean, those are the things, of course, there's still a long list because it's always our life to, you know, find out and dami-daming complex issues why um konte yun nagsa sign up but i want to also check in with others ano yung ibang experiences nila or most of the com yeah so why don't you share your experiences to our or our 43 zoom participants wow. and 22 participants from fb live and counting so go to the chat share your experience and then we can have an interaction mm-hmm. around it no Another thing na naiisip ko mm. lang, ito parang ano to, yung, yung fear of change. Na fear of for, change. Yes. So for instance, iba, you, you go, kanyari, may training on MS Teams. Kasi alam mo, after ng training, papagamitin mo. <laughs> and then, some people are not, you know, used to change. And sometimes you introduce training because you want them. The result is really you want a change, right? I, I think, mas okay na na hindi ako na-train para it's not expected for me to know. Ayan. So, kailangan din, gawan mo din sa ng strategy on how you can, you know, um, address that. Kasi right, that's really right. a valid reason why some people are parang intimidated or, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, uncomfortable attending a mm-hmm. training. Right? right. Oh, very interesting comment coming from Kevin. Uh, isang suki natin. Why will I attend X training Na eight hours, eh, nasa YouTube chat, uh, chat GPT. Exactly. Or dagdagan ko, no? Sometimes it's also uh, in Coursera, uh, libre pa, di ba? Audit the course, it's free. Exactly. So, wh- what's your reaction to that, uh, Sandra? Well, I think that's a valid, ano naman. And the chat GPT, I think it's a, a very important tool to learn on the job. Yan yung mga technology ngayon na, as you need it, when you need it, it's on the go, talagang it, it's there, right? Mm-hmm. But for me kasi, dito na lalabas yung relevance and the value of your dream. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna get the chat GPT and it will not share my experience. Yes, matututo ka, but to what extent? Especially if you're very specialized to your industry. Kaya nga isang style dyan is to get a functional leader to help you train so that Kasi hindi naman every, porkit magaling kang mag-facilitate, you can teach anything. There's Correct. still the expertise. And it doesn't mean that your own understanding mm-hmm. is always the right way. You will always need others as well to complement the learning style that you have. So mm-hmm. there's no one perfect mm-hmm. way to learn na you just learn. You learn best by books, but it doesn't mean that you will all learn from the books. This is Correct. the time that yung human, yung, yung the mm-hmm. human, you know, concept of, you know, being, having a trainer in front of you that speaks about real experiences, shows emotion, shows excitement, having a reason to believe because mm-hmm. there's a real story behind it. Chat GPT will just give you whatever sources, but 
Do you know someone who's actually successful in applying the skills? Mm -hmm. The value of having um, a live participant, diba? Or I'm sorry, right. right. Okay. So in short, what we are actually selling, it's not the learning programs per se, but the relevance of that learning program uh, in alignment with organizational goals, as Elaine uh, Fajardo mentioned, and what you also mentioned, it's not only relevance to the attendees, but relevance to those who will approve uh, the training program, especially kung may budget yan, ano, or may disruption. No? How relevant is that, not only to the individual attending, but also to the leaders? No? So, tama ba? so that's what you are really selling more than anything else. How relevant okay. is this to me, to the organization, and to my uh, approver or my leader? Right? Your, your thoughts, Pearl, on this? Um, I think in terms of, I'd like to answer the question ni Kevin. No? I mean, why would right. I attend X training na eight hours? I'd like to share with you my, my experience because we have a very robust um, LMS. So we use Skillsoft and it mm -hmm. really has and both Skillsoft and Linda. So parehas yan available sa, sa employees namin. So imagine all of those training programs, kaya na nilang kunin. But how do we sell our own um, training program? We leverage on that. So we do that as free work. And then what we emphasize for our, sabi nga ni Sandra, dati days ang binibilang mm -hmm. natin sa training. Ngayon, two hours na lang kami. Bawat isang topic, two hours na lang. So what we do is we leverage on the fact that because we are a global company, we tell our participants, this is an opportunity for you to actually get the experiences of all the leaders around the globe. So you might have your experience maybe in Manila, but try to find out what's the experience of our leaders who have been with the company for like 10 years, like 12 years, mm -hmm. and try to leverage on that experience. So that is what we are selling doon sa mga instructor-led training namin. And that, I think um, that's one thing that you could sell when you say, why should I attend, di ba? It's basically the interaction with your co-participants, same interests. And also what we did, we also created what we call a community of practice. Mm -hmm. So yung leadership training namin, my Facebook page na dedicated to all leaders mm -hmm. at and yun, communities of practice you can ask questions you can like discuss uh we sometimes post a topic or whatever and then get their insights so they also learn from communities of practice so those are some of the things we do to actually sell our programs i thank you for that pearl so it's like we divided this into two sets of questions. One, it's about understanding the principles, the concept as to what and to why. And as we learn from uh, Zandra and all the others, no? so as trainers, we should be salespersons and marketers at the same time, right? And when we say selling the program internally, it means a lot of things, but uh, the most important thing is that we are selling the relevance of that program strategically uh, to the leaders and to the participants so that it doesn't only drive participation, but as Sandra mentioned, it also builds the foundation of learning culture. Now we go uh, to the one that I'm sure a lot of us or all of us here are very much interested. And here it's not only Sandra. Let's all take this opportunity to share our answer to this very important question, which is about the how. So having known the what and the why, uh, the who, and the causes of why people do not uh, really attend or get the buy-in, uh, how do we now effectively sell our learning programs internally? In short, here, we'd like to exchange uh, not just ideas, but experiences and best practices. So Sandra will not be alone here. Let's all share uh, what we have experienced so that at the end of the day, we all learn in the process. But of course, Sandra, if you can start the ball rolling. So yeah. what are the effective ways by which you experience it you know, in terms of selling the programs internally? 
And as Sandra mentions, uh, is sharing hers, you can also share yours in our chat box. Okay. Actually, when Pearl was, uh, you know, speaking early, important talaga to sell that component of interaction. Because when you're selling a product, you know, again, I'm, I will compare it to ChatGPT because it has been, you know, a hot topic. ChatGPT will not give you opinions, will not help you, you know, converse and really ask real life questions na very specific, you know, to your need. But um, I mentioned earlier that just like yeah, the sales and marketing, there's a foundation. I always start with aligning the objective to the articles. I know it's like a big word, but you can actually do that. Being more to goals, organization goals, operational goals, really partnering with the functional head. So that hindi ka masyadong magpo-push ng sell. Kasi alam mo na, whatever they, it is that they need, right? They will tell you what you need so that you can focus on that. And then um, you, can, you, you get top leadership buy-in, but also to make them as your influencer or your sponsor. Okay, dapat itong tao na to is someone that people really aspire, may learning, um, yung, yung tinatawag na always learning mindset, and has demonstrated how the person became successful because of continuous learning. Makakatulong kasi yan kapag meron kang nakikita na parang nagsa-champion talaga ng learning, di ba? So that people will have a reason to believe, okay? Um, some of the foundational things that I do to set it up is also included in performance management. Okay, kailangan meron ding uh, integration, you know, that reinforces the importance of learning because this is the culture that you want for your organization. And, you know, if you put it in the performance management as part of their goals and target, yeah, definitely magkakaroon ng um, parang interest and at least um, importance and may isip nila talaga na it's part of their role. It's not only to do their work functionally, but it's on the side learning also to be ahead of the game, right? There's also, um, of course, the content, the, the different types of um, learning. It's not only face-to-face, -face, it's not only online, books, you, you have your uh, videos. Make it more engaging. Later on, I'll show also some of the non-conventional, yung mga very, um, you know, engaging ways of how I did it. And another important is making your functional managers as your learning facilitators. So you train them because they're expert. So people will most likely, you know, join if an expert is there to really discuss how they're doing their job, for instance, for 10 years, and then I will transfer everything that I know. That is actually a solid way how to do that. So those are just some of the things that I, I, I can share. But, you know, if conversation, I can share more later on. All right. Thank you, Sandra. Well, what about the others? I saw something that is very interesting here, which is another good practice is to hardwire accountability with the manager's involvement with the specific practices and goals. This is from Karen. Karen, is it okay if uh, you explain that a little more so that uh, we can also learn from your insight, if that's okay? You can sure. unmute. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um. No, I just, I just thought, you even in the past, like, based on experience, it really is, uh, even more effective for participants when there, there's involvement, um, their manager's involvement in the learning process. You know, like it's not just a matter of getting their their approval to attend the training. You know, like, and, and then after that, give them a report of what they learned. But really, it's like what's going to change, what they can expect from the participants or from their um, team members after attending the training. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Excellent insight there. Now, let me go back to Kevin. Because uh, earlier, he asked about how do we differentiate the pitch to top management versus the managers and versus the staff? So in your experience, Sandra, uh, I've seen how you did this. So uh, how do you differentiate that pitch effectively? Sorry, sorry. Ano ulit? I was trying to answer AJ. So, no. ah, okay. <laughs> uh, so this is a question from Kevin. 
How okay. do you differentiate or how do we differentiate the pitch to top management okay. versus the managers and versus the okay. staff? Okay. So I mentioned about foundation being strategic, right? And kasama doon ang comprehensive communication plan. And when you create the communication plan, it means that you have the segmented target audience and you strategize. Mm -hmm. Depende kasi yan kung ano ang personality. Diba? So depende kung anong personality ng managers. Ano ba sila? Mas engaged ba sila? Mas sila ba yung busy? Or supportive ba yung executive? Or data-driven ba si executive pag mas gusto nila, no, I don't have time. Why will I spend 1 million? Show me how it will return to 10 million afterwards. Or we already know that, right? We have mentors. We do that informally. So knowing those dynamics, putting it in an actual plan, and then getting your group to really brainstorm about how do you come up with a good comp plan. So yun yung pitch mo, di ba? It, it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all, di ba? What works for me is that I create a big plan and then kinukuha ko kung ano yung aspect na mag-work according to the target audience. So, and, and my team knows that. So we have, let's say, a 100-page comp plan. But if I mm -hmm. go to marketing team, this is what's important for them because they're very visual, the, these courses. So we, we kind of pick what will work well for every, but it will only happen if you know your functions. And this mm -hmm. is actually related, no? may I answer na rin the question of AJ. How do we yes, get the uh, in the head of department? Diba? That we're, we realize that we're business partners. This is demonstrated. And this is not demonstrated when you are already trying to get an enrollment. Meaning, that's why there's there has to be a strategy na from the start pa lang. You cannot be a business partner if you don't know their targets. If you don't know the gaps, if you don't know what's important for them right now and in the future, and paano yung relationship building? Dapat meron ka laging learning agenda. You don't wait for a training to happen, for you to go to the HR, Sir June, Penny ako participant. No. Meron kang monthly catch-up sa kanya. Kasi being a business partner entails trust. And, and again, no groundswell mas mahihirap ka maghabol. Pero dapat umaandar yung strategy mo holistically, cohesively, there's a learning strategy. Para kapag dumating yung piecemeal training mo, nakaset up yung foundation mo. And that is also yung mga business partnering activities, research, and strategic plan. Right. Uh, per or AM muna, uh, what about you? Based on your experience, in addition to what Sandra mentioned, no? How do you distinguish the pitch between HOD or top management, the managers, and uh, the staff? Yeah, so very critical yung sinasabi ni Ms. Sandra na know your audience. When mm -hmm. I present to executives, and if it's the first time I'm going to present to them, I will check even with other people who've already presented because it's important that you know their style. Maybe uh, you're a storyteller, but they don't appreciate stories. You know, they want you to immediately go straight to the... You, that's critical, guys. Like, 100%. Um, that's that's the first research you're going to do is uh, how they prefer to receive their information. So that's one. And then for... What do you call this? Uh, for, for managers, it helps if they can see what the gains will be. So, for example... And it helps na pagka-champion mo yung mga leaders. I remember we had a program before and one of the leaders embraced it. Nagpa-leaderboard siya. Ginamify niya. Oh, yung maumatay oh. ng training, tas chinect niya. Sa within, yung mga team leaders within her function, nag-competition sila kung sino yung ano, mag-lead, ganyan, sa numbers after attending training. And that, nakatulong sa amin yun because we could use that information to continually market the program and then it becomes so much more appealing to others kasi nag-gain yung peer nila eh, right? Um, so that's another approach and then for for um, you know the general population I've seen testimonials really work so you find people who they can relate to really speak about the program and and you know create marketing collateral out of I see. All right. Thank you, AM. And there's one important point mentioned by Sandra, and I'd like uh, Pearl to comment on this. Uh, it's about the relationship building, especially in your case, Pearl. No, uh, 
because of the difficulty of doing that in a virtual setting, uh, unlike in a face-to-face, -face, you have a lot of opportunities there. So, uh, so it's not really about the importance of relationship building, but how do you do it? Now, how do you do relationship building so that when you sell your learning programs internally, there's already like an emotional connection between you and the decision makers, no? Well, I think it helps that um, we get to meet our executives every so often. They come to like they come to Manila, so you get to meet with them, you get to chat with them, and that helps in terms of the relationship building. So I've already met like um, I've had meetings with our CEO, our CEO, even globally, you know. And also, what I think one of the things that helped me develop that relationship with our um, Execom or XO team, our executive leadership team, is that I launched a program for the senior leadership um, brown bag sessions. And these brown bag sessions are facilitated by our executives. So syempre, before they can actually talk to people, to our leaders, I would have to orient them like, what are the like what's the objective of the program or that you're going to talk about? I also help them develop their decks and also like orient them on like what you're going to say. And then this is where you put in your experiences. And that actually develops that very close relationships with our with my executives. Kaya when I have a program like um uh, that I want to sell, when I ask for a meeting with them. It's so easy because they know me by name. Yung, kasi ang hirap niyan pag global company ka eh. Yung how do they know you by name, by first name. Diba? Kasi ang dami nyo eh. So, so yun, with that, they already know me by first name. So when I sell a program, it's quite easy for me to sell a program. And they can actually give me feedback na, I don't like that, take that away, ganyan. Kasi ganun naka-closing relationship. So that helped me a lot with uh, developing uh, my relationship and selling my programs to the executives, which is the first part of any program that you're going to, to sell, di ba? Before you even sell to your leaders, before you even sell to your uh, employees, dapat ano muna, nasell mo muna sa executives mo. And I could, um, I could always say, pwede bang isama nyo to na requirement to sa promotions na hindi tayo magpo-promote pagka hindi nila natapos tong program na to. Na-yes nila kaagad yan kasi ano eh, di ba, meron ng personal relationship. I see. Uh, and also sabi nga ni AM, maganda yung you know what they're interested in. In a previous company that I had, my CEO was very interested about gamification kasi nagsimula siya as admin ng Dungeons and Dragons. So talagang, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, when I created a program, I really hinged on gamification. Sinabi ko pa lang ngayon, tarma lang, third slide ko pa lang na, this is gamification. Okay, sabi niya, one million ang budget yan. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> So it really helps. Tama si AM. Na yun dollars yung dapat. Know. Yes. One million dollars. <laughs> so di ba? Parang ganun ka agad. All right. Yeah. So in short, relationship uh, really do counts, no? In selling your uh, learning programs. In other words, it's not just about the product. It's about also the seller. So if the seller has no good relations, uh, with the buyers, this means the stakeholders, then even if the product is good, uh, sometimes it won't work. No? Uh, in real life naman, kahit sa iba't ibang produkto, ganun din. Eh, di ba? So that's... Uh, all right. So what about the others? We have uh, nine minutes. If you can still share by chat or uh, via our Facebook Live, your thoughts, ideas, best practices on uh, how can we effectively sell our learning programs effectively other than those that are already mentioned uh, by our guests, uh, by Sandra, by AM, by Pearl. No? Like if I look at FB Live, Jaja mentioned, sa TNA pa lang, yeah. Uh, it's like an agreement, no? Uh, TNA pa lang, dapat involved na. And I remember uh, a TNA that we did before uh, when I was with PetNet. Uh, this is an idea of uh, my teammates, uh, si Gab, no? Uh, yeah. 
you know God very well, uh, Sandra. No, so malikot yung isip niya. Eh. Uh, very creative. So why don't we apply design thinking on uh, TNA? So ibig sabihin, yung TNA, hindi yung typical na paper uh, survey. Okay. We brought uh, the people together and then we applied design thinking. They ideate. No? Sinundan namin yon, and their ideation is on how can we make this training program more uh, appealing, more productive. So tumawid siya from needs analysis into inputs and uh, inputs to design. And so that's my uh, recollection there, right? Can oh, we see face, the others? My, my most yeah, Sandra? favorite way to mm -hmm. sell, since si June na hanggang ngayon naalala niya yung mascot. Oh, yes. So, you know the personality <laughs> of... So there's one business kasi na super fun fun sila, 80% millennial. So ang ginawa ko, nagpatahi ako talaga ng mascot. And then tinawag ko yung mascot na yun na AL, shortcut for always learning. Learning. Tapos nag-rounds kami really to make a big deal about the change of the learning culture. And then the leaders, we ask them, you know, to say always learning in the organization. Ganyan. So parang, yun yung isa. And then, yung isang pinaka gusto ko din na hindi ko makalimutan is, alam yung Mystery Manila. You create yes, your, yes. your uh, training. We participated and, there. Yeah, so madali siyang ipenda kasi halo na dito yung sinabi ni Pearl of Gamification, may leaderboard. So, for instance, meron kaming BCP. We need to change about business continuity, di ba? How, how will you teach that via, you know, face-to-face -face training? So, ang ginawa namin, nilock namin. So, there's also the design thinking approach na nag-experiment kami. Nag-create kami ng puzzles, ng scenario na kunyari signal number five. Kinulong namin lahat ng participants, you know, in the room and then they had to find they have to find their ways on how to go out. So, yun pa lang hindi na kami nagbenta ng program. Kasi pagkatapos noon, challenging kasi siya eh. Did you complete the nakalabas ba kayo or hindi, 'di ba? And then along the content, it's really engaging na naging competition siya between departments that the global organization adopted. On my second company, wala na akong ganung team who can do that. Ang ginawa ko, kukuha ako ng third party. So I actually contracted with Mystery Manila. I asked Mystery Manila to come up with, you know, a puzzle. So things like that, diba? Those are unconventional na parang to make a buzz. And and for your product, for your product, for your training to actually sell. Get out of the traditional ways of communicating. There's a training, you're invited. And, and last, I remember a video that we sent. Again, depende to sa company nyo. Merong, right. alam mo yung zombies? Papunta sa sa'yo na video. There's an episode before. Tapos, isa siya, na corner siya ng limang zombies. We stopped the video and then we said, critical thinking, it's a must. Ah. Ganun, ganun ka, ano, pero <laughs> ngayon lahat sila, oh, eh, usong-uso yun, di ba? So, susunod ka rin sa uso, di ba? Right, right. For buzzword. I mean, what my point is that you can really go out of the unconventional way to communicate, you know, the need for your training depends on how the brand personality of your learning program and the brand of your organization, how well you know. And you can make it different per department. Okay, wag tayo ma-confine into the typical Canva poster and video, right? All so right. that's a challenge for everyone. Okay, 655 always between. <laughs> <laughs> we are now <laughs> at the closing <laughs> part, yeah. So, but I'm sure uh, even with that short amount of time, uh, there's so much uh, that we have learned, no? Uh, from gamification, relationship building, dapat salesman ka pala, may mong kang unique value proposition, and uh, you should develop a formal engagement or communication plan, and so many more. No, So it's time to synthesize, and uh, with your one-minute uh, statement uh, from each of our uh, guests and co-facilitators, right? So starting with you, Sandra. Parting words? Ako sa akin, do not be a piecemeal. If you're talking about selling your program, create a grand strategy that is cohesive. 
create the groundswell, create the needs, highlight the value, and you know, use your skills and upskill in terms of sales and marketing because that will come handy as you also sell your learning. So what peace meal, be strategic. That's why your communication plan is an example of that. Excellent, Sandra. Right. AM? Yes, always, pabalik ako sa tao. Know the people that you need to communicate with and again, how they prefer to receive that information, whether it's top level, mid level, or the general population. And if you keep practicing that, if you really understand uh, the people that you're communicating with and, you know, craft your communication plan and strategy specific to them, then I, I guarantee uh, you will hear people talking about your programs. Thank you. All right. Pearl? Um, I think they've, they've all said what's important in terms of marketing it, branding it, right? But the bottom line is kung walang daman yung training mo, no matter how good you are in marketing. Diba? Kasi one of the best marketing strategies is word of mouth. Yeah. If people see that they learned from your training, they it had an, an impact in terms of their work. But they were more productive, they were more uh bet they were better in relationship building. If they see that, then there's word of mouth. And I think one of the things that I also learned, because you mga participants go when they see that the training. I think I will have my people attend this because I like this training. So really, there's also word of mouth and kailangan talaga. Balik tayo dun sa, sa basics ng training. We had it with Adi, di ba? So dapat solid din yung Adi mo, di ba? For, for mm -hmm. your program to, to sell. All right. So form and substance, no? So even if you have all these uh, great marketing efforts, but if your product, which is the substance of it all, is not something that they feel to use the words uh, word of Sandra relevant, and even our president, uh, current president Irene, also mentioned uh, that if if it is not based on identified gaps uh, and it's not relevant, then uh, you wouldn't get the support of your managers and leaders, right? So, oh, how I wish we have more time to spend uh, on this very important topic. But uh, one thing that I really realized. Even before, is that ayo ko sa sales training na lang ako, and then we realize when in training you are actually uh, a salesperson. No, oh, I'm not that creative in marketing, but I can do the facilitation. No, right? In training, you also do marketing. So in short, as trainers, we have various roles, right? And one of the important roles uh, that we play is not only uh, the adi, no, uh, but selling uh, the solutions that we have developed, right? And that makes us that 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 makes it relevant in terms of the design because of the TNA that we did. But how do you make the people feel that it is relevant to them? So there's a big uh, difference between developing and designing a program that you feel it is relevant for them versus them recognizing that it is indeed relevant for the organization, for the leaders, and for your target audience. The one that connects the two is your role as learn uh, as salesperson and as a marketing person on how effectively you sell your learning programs internally. So thank you for that. Sandra, sayo ko na kuha yon. Maybe that in the exact words, but that thought is what I got from this. And it's a time well spent. Thank you very much. Uh, we owe it to you, Sandra, uh, not only for the time she spent uh, with PSTD and your many contributions, but tonight uh, you gave us something that uh, would really stick uh, with us. And I'm sure that next training program that we will all do is something that would be different because of this. Thank you very much. And everyone, yeah, sure. thank you for thank sharing you. your Take thoughts. Take care, everyone. Good night.